Hey guys, B here with our next Teen Loop Crates talk. Today we are talking about Contagion by Aaron Bowman. <clears throat> and, um, what an exciting book. Oh my goodness. So many things have happened in the reading that, that I've done this week. And so we just, we just need to get right into it because there are so many things. I have so many questions still. <laughs> Still have questions. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's... Oh, that was the beginning of last time. Okay. I have my notes here, so... So, where we ended last time, they were at the drilling sites, and uh, Dylan instructed the crew, part of the crew, to go down and retrieve a, a body that was down in the, the ravine, and Toby, Toby was the one to go down. Remember, Toby is the IT tech. And while he's down there, he's trying to wrangle this body into the body bag. And something grabs his foot and pulls him waist deep in this pile of carnage. And, excuse me, what? <laughs> What? What is happening right now? Um, and so he freaks out and says, pull me back up. And they find out that he has been attacked. Something has attacked him. And his leg has been, like, punctured and wounded. And so they call for backup from Dylan and uh, head back to... Um, they head back. They head back to the rover so that they can go back to their their ship. And while they're trying to do that, Thea gets left behind accidentally. Um, the wind, the, a storm comes in, and the wind is so strong that she can't get to the rover, and so she's left behind because they have to get Toby to medical because he's bleeding out and it's not looking good for Toby. So, for the sake of him, they go back to the ship. And, um, Thea, poor Thea, she gets left behind and finds the Witch Hazel bunker. So, we remember Witch Hazel was the, um, the mission that Lisbeth Tarlow went on when she was a kid with her parents. And so Thea finds the bunker, and she goes in, and when she tries to turn on the lights, the storm, the power, the, the lightning from the storm electrocutes her through the, the power thingy, and it kills her. And I have to tell you, when that happened, I was like, what? <laughs> that seemed rather abrupt. Before I go any further, you should know, if you haven't realized already, there are going to be spoilers in today's talk. So, um, if you haven't read this far yet, um, I apologize for spoiling the thing about Thea, and don't listen anymore if you haven't read yet. Um, and so, we find out that the boy, this mysterious boy, is in the bunker and revives Thea, so she doesn't actually die, and... I'm telling you, that gave me a little bit of whiplash, like, what? I thought she was dead. I was already preparing myself, like, I can't believe Thea's dead, but no, she's not. She's not dead anymore, which is great, because <laughs> she's, she's really important to the story. So, let's see. Um, in the whole midst of all of this, Nova sees the, the black ribbons in the water, and um, we're still not sure what's going on there. We find out that the boy's name is Cohen, also known as Amos, and uh, when Thea comes to, she is wary of Cohen, rightfully so, because Evans, if you'll recall, Evans left a message, written in his own blood, mind you, to not trust the kid, don't trust the kid, and we also know through these little inserts the little italicized passages thrown in occasionally, that um, 
Cohen has something. He's hiding something. I'm certain of it. Um, so I don't know if I trust him. Maybe we should listen to Evans and not trust him, right? So Toby, he is not in a good place. He has started to hemorrhage from his nose and his eyes, and um, it's just not a good thing. So Tarlo, uh, they get back to the ship, and Tarlo sedates him so that he um, isn't hurting himself because he's, he's, like, thrashing around and things. And, um, yeah. So the thing about this book is that it jumps around a lot between the different perspectives. So that's how my notes are. <laughs> so I apologize um, if it's a little disjointed. Um, but Toby's like, we need to leave. We need to get out of here. Um, so Cohen and Thea, so Cohen has this theory that, um, if Hevitz Industries discovers that, uh, something is going on on the planet, some like this stuff, this stuff happening with Toby, then um, he believes that the the company will um, basically destroy all of the evidence, including the people, and quarantine the planet so that no one knows about their, um, you know, uh, messed up attempt at trying to find Carrarium. Um, But Cohen also reveals that the the people who are infected um, at the ravine are not actually dead, and that they can reanimate, um, which is, like, super scary, and seems biologically impossible. But there's, you know, this contagion that clearly is um, keeping the bodies in a state of being able to reanimate, to, to spread the infection. Which is wild, wild. It's like, it's like virus zombies. <laughs> they just came back to life and they're like, oh, hey guys, let's spread the disease. Um, so Cohen and Thea, excuse me, they make it back to the Celestial Envoy uh, with the rest of the people. And Dylan immediately puts Cohen in isolation because they're not supposed to trust the kid. Um, and Cleaver, the security detail, Cleaver, he finds a tab, um, and it has some footage on it from the Black Quarry crew, and it shows one of the crew members getting sick in the same way that Toby is getting sick, and then what happens after the stage that Toby's in now, um, which is not good, not good at all, <laughs> and by that I mean the crew member, like, becomes violent and attacks the other people and it's the virus or the infection the bacteria whatever it is it's that using the body as a host to attack and spread the bacteria to other people the infection right so they basically know oh toby this is probably going to happen to toby and while they're all watching this footage Guess who wakes up? Toby. <laughs> and he has gained this superhuman strength, and he, like, pops off his wrist cuffs and his ankle cuffs like it's nothing. And, you know, goes... The crew comes back into the med medical bay, and Toby's there, and he's not um, secured anymore, and so they have to, like, attack him. It's a whole thing. It is a whole thing. And in the process of doing so, he actually gets a scratch on Sullivan, which is Nova's cousin, who's also on the trip. And you might remember Sullivan was uh, very hesitant to go to the drill site at first because he has a family at home and he, you know, didn't want to do anything dangerous. But, you know, in this moment of seeing Toby being 
aggressive, Sullivan jumps in and helps the cause and helps to get Toby into one of the isolation cubes. Cubes? Cubicle? Isolation pod? <laughs> He's in isolation. Um, but consequently, Sullivan gets scratched, too, and becomes infected, and he has to go into isolation as well. Reading through my notes. Thank you for your patience. So at this point, Dylan's like, okay guys, we need to go back to our ship, the Odyssey, and uh, call Hevitz and get some um, advice on what to do next. And the whole crew is like, of course we should. We should have done this ages ago before all of this many, many steps ago. We should have hailed Hevitz and asked for advice, but we are at this point now. And at this point, they go back to Odyssey. Um, Thea and Tarlo, uh, well, Tarlo, Dr. Tarlo insists on staying back and running some tests to see if she can cure the infected people, um, Toby and Sullivan and asks that Thea stay as well, and so Thea does. Um, and while they are taking samples of... So they... Back up a little bit. Thea and Tarlo decide to get some blood samples from Toby and Sullivan, and so in isolation they're being sedated by a, a, uh, an airborne sedative, and, um, so they're, they're passed out, so it's somewhat safe to go in and get some blood samples. And so Tarlo and Thea go in, and they get the blood samples, and while they're doing that, the sedation kind of, um, distributes through the air and becomes less potent. Mind you, Thea and Tarlo are in suits, so they're protected from the sedative. Um, what they're not protected from is... Toby and Sullivan, who wake up because the sedative is dispersing, and um, they get attacked. And Tarlo, unfortunately, gets her helmet taken off and gets scratched up, so it looks like she's going to be infected. And so um, Thea manages to get out, and she releases Cohen from his isolation unit, and... Um, it's at this point that things get really wild because they're about to leave the medical bay and who would be in the window of the door but one of these crew members, the Black Quarry crew, who are all in the ravine, except now they're not. They have reanimated and have come to the ship to spread the disease to these new humans that are here on the planet. <laughs> it's just wild, it's wild. And so, as you can imagine, lots of activity ensues, and they uh, they are able to get out through a uh, different passage, through um, just a different passage that leads out of the ship. And so, Cohen and Thea escape, and they are able to get back to the... Um, get back to the Odyssey. While they're doing this, these adventures, at the Odyssey, Dylan and Nova realize that someone has sabotaged their communication system, and the landing gear is um, messed up. It's It looks like the ground is sinking a little bit, and so one of the landing feet has sunk into the ground, um, and therefore it's like the leg is bent a little bit, and they can't they can't get out. And so Cleaver, our friend Cleaver on security, decides to uh, kind of shimmy under the ship and try to dig out the foot. It doesn't help. In fact, the ship sinks a little bit more and ends up crushing his legs. Sorry, Cleaver. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing.
Um, and so now they're they're basically stuck. They're basically stuck on this planet where there are reanimated corpses that are coming at after everyone. It's just so much. <laughs> um, so while all of this is happening, Toby and Sullivan have gotten free of their isolation unit somehow. They've managed to uh, physically get themselves out of the unit, and they show up at the Odyssey. And Nova, poor Nova, she has to to kill her cousin Sullivan, who is, you know, trying desperately to infect her. And so, that's a big bummer. Um, but they all pile into the rover to escape the the people, the infected ones. And um, there's this horrifying moment where the, the rover won't turn over. And we think that they're all just going to perish. But the rover turns back on. And um, Nova guns it. And uh, unfortunately, Cleaver falls out of the back. And while Cleaver is falling, he grabs onto the ankle of Cohen. And so they both go. <sighs> so much. And then Cohen breaks out with these mad skills, takes a pickaxe and a knife and goes to town to these on these infected people, just like, you know, putting them down left and right. And um, something is going on with Cohen. Cohen says that he doesn't trust Tarlow. But I don't know if we should trust Cohen. I quote, He is an eager, angry, vicious machine. What does that mean? Is he just, like, traumatized from all that he's been through in the last two months plus? Because he's only 17. We learned that he's only 17. So maybe he's just been really traumatized. Maybe he's infected. I don't know. The next chapter is called The Immune. And Loki, I kind of wonder if Tarlo is immune. Because we haven't seen Tarlo. And how did she survive when she was 10? Riddle me this. Oh, that's a whole other thing. Um, while Cohen and Thea are... Driving to the Odyssey, um, Cohen shares with the uh, this video that he found some footage of Dr. Tarlow when she was a kid um, on the Witch Hazel mission. And so we see what happens to Tarlow's parents, and that is that her dad got into the water where the black ribbons were and got infected and then attacked her mom. And Lisbeth ends up shooting them. She uses a gun and, and shoots them to, to, to stop them from hurting her. Um, terribly traumatic and sad. So, yeah, that's a whole thing that happened. Is this book heavy for you? I don't find it heavy. There's just a lot. There's a lot going on. <laughs> There's a whole lot going on. So, yeah, I think Tarlo, my theory is that Tarlo is um, secretly immune, and hmm, maybe they'll use her immunity to, maybe that's why she wanted samples, to, like, try to make a cure with her immunity. Hmm. And what's going on with Cohen? What's his deal? Should we trust him? I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll have to read and find out. <laughs> Alright guys, so next week we will be finishing up Contagion by Aaron Bowman. And then after that we will have our next Live Crate book. So next week, even though it's the first week of April, excuse me, 
we're going to read, well, we're going to finish talking about Contagion. See what happens. I hear that there is a um, plot twist at the end, so see what happens there. Um, and then we'll start our April title the next week. So, I hope that you are enjoying the book, and if you are, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Um, yeah, and so that's all I have for this week. So, until next time, be safe, be kind, wash your hands, and we'll see you next week for our next Team Lipcrates talk. Okay, bye guys.